Hi, you're welcome to Diaspora Forum. Um, first, I have to thank everyone that responded to my last episode. Um, I, we are very grateful. We we'll, would we'll love to hear from you. It is a participatory thing. Uh, it shows you're concerned about the issues uh, just as we raise them. Um, however, I have uh, to uh, make an appeal. Please, writing me will just end the discussion between you and I. Um, I would re I really like you to leave the comments below so that others will learn from your point because they're very helpful. I might have forgotten or missed some points in the process. So once again, thank you very much for participating. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking and ringing the bell so that the, the videos we produce every week can come directly to you. All right. Thank you very much. Like I always say, this is a place to be. Uh, we really would want you to support our effort by advertising in either of our segments, you know, or in the video entirely. We'll be very grateful about it. So please do like, subscribe, and ring the bell below. Like I told you, just watching the videos when it's not going to help. You got to log in through your Gmail account, pull up the YouTube, and then you can actually like, subscribe, ring the bell, and leave the bell, the, ring the bell below. So our topic for today, I, it doesn't sound right, but left alone, I would have said some things we could tweak. Yes, tweak, not exactly the things that we do badly because yes, I give our people credit. I give a lot of people of color credit for education, especially people from diaspora, um, people from, in, from immigrant, uh, immigrants from different places in diaspora. We take education seriously. Uh, we strive as a people and uh, we really hold our children accountable. Uh, living, dropping out of school is not an option. So really we take pride at those things. And uh, to that, we're very grateful. But there's some things we gotta do, uh, you know, to make our stay, make our lives better. You know, um, I guess, uh, you know, Rome was not built in a day, so, yeah, as we, as we develop, as we go, we'll learn some things and make our lives better. So I, um, we start the, the, the episode with, uh, did you know? Yes, we have to go back to tradition, did you know? Look at that. Did you know that um, Jack, Jack Johnson, yes, Jack Johnson was the first African-American man, African-American man to hold the world heavyweight boxing uh, champion you know, in boxing, that was in 1908. Again, in 1908, he held the belt until 1915. Check, look at him, look at him. 1908. And then, okay, the second one that I'll just, it's a, it's a little thing that you might not see in your books, but something that you should really be proud about. Do you know that John Mercer Lanston was the first African-American man to become a lawyer in the United States of America? He passed the bar exam in Ohio in 1854. I say it again, in 1854. An African-American as a lawyer, you know? Um, he was elected to the post of town clerk for Brownham, Ohio in 1855. Yes, Lansing, Lansing became the first, became one of the first African-American ever elected to public office in America. Yes, and Mr. John Mercer Langston was also the great uncle of Langston Hughes, the famed poet of Harlem Renaissance. Look at him. Yeah, that's very good. It's just something that you know we need to we need to remember as a people and tell ourselves. So imagine in 18, imagine what Langston Hughes, you know, later became in America. So you can imagine if everyone is given an opportunity to thrive, you know, in United States or in Canada or in United Kingdom or Germany, I would have thrived as a people, but we weren't given the opportunity. But it's all the same things I would like you to remember. Did you know? Okay. And today's topic, like I said, the topic of today is that the things we do badly. Yes, the things we do badly. It, it, it doesn't sound right, like I said, because uh, we do some things right, but at the same time, there's some things we do not do badly. Because look, the reason we say this is this. Because before we start, we look at the proverb of the day. Yeah, take a look at that proverb. Take a look at that proverb. It says, to know the road ahead. Though we have to ask those coming back. Yes. Look at that picture very well. 
if that guy is sinking in the Mediterranean, look at all the people behind him. All those Africans, Arabs, trying to go to Europe. If they knew the road ahead the way it was, they would have thought twice before they embarked on those dangerous journey. That's why the proverb of the day is very pertinent to our discussion. To know the road ahead, ask those coming back. It's an African proverb. All right. Like I said, what can we trick? Take for example, we have, we do, we just avoid our medical checkups. Yes, we avoid medical check. It's so sad. Our people die unnecessarily in diaspora. Yes, we do not take diabetes seriously. We do not take hypertension seriously amongst our men. We do not take mental health seriously. We still bring those beliefs, those, those cultural beliefs we have. We hide things, we hide things. We do not seek medical attention that is very, it's every, all you need to do is to ask. Ask! You can get it. Erectile dysfunction. Everything for us is witchcraft. Yes, we believe so much in witchcraft. We are so embedded in it. Witchcraft. How can you have diabetes? How can you have hypertension? How can you have erectile dysfunction? How can you have mental health issues and become witchcraft, my people? Please. Everything is spiritual. People going for job interviews. People looking for contracts, asking for contracts. It's just spiritual. I've never heard any pastor or imam in diaspora question any of the parishioners. Why are you, wh what is this? Women go to pastors and imams to pray to marry rich husbands. How can marrying a man, how can marrying a woman, how can marry successful people, how can you go and pray for successful people specifically? And no imam will tell us it is wrong. No pastor will. All they want is if you pay the money, if you give them the money, it is wrong. We have to trick this. We have to get out of this. We have to get out of this mental slavery thing. It is wrong. And the pastors, most genuine pastors, have to stand up and tell people, no. There are things you got to work hard for. There are things you got to do. There are things, that's why as a soldier, they, we practice is all we did. Practice is all we did. We gotta shoot until our hands were, were hurting. That's why I knew when I was in battle, I would not fear. All I need to do is to point my weapon at you. I know where it was going because I zeroed it before I went to battle. Yes, there's God. Yes, there's spiritual, but just certain things that is not. It's not. You do your work first, then you ask God, guide me. It's gonna be well with you. At the same time, some of our people, um, the educated ones, the successful ones, they shy away, they move away. They move away from the riffraffs because they think they're well off, because they think they have medical insurance and everything, they don't need their people anymore. It's wrong. Look around you. Look at that, look at the Jews. Look at the Hispanics, look at the Indians, look at the Chinese, look at the Arabs. They all come together. They all come together to form a strong body to fight evil, to strive to succeed as a people in the world. Yes, that's how they succeed. Our people who have no personal or life insurance, we do not have insurance in our life. Everybody just keeps working, working, working two, three jobs. For what? For what? And people just drop dead. Cab drivers drop dead in their cab. People die for nothing. And when you look, oh my God, you see that the, the, there's just blockages everywhere. We got to have life insurance. When people die, they leave so much burden for the living. It is wrong. We have to, we have to talk to one another. That's the things I mean about we have to tweak in our life to make it better in diaspora. So I not to leave so much burden for the living. We live in apartments. We just live in apartments for too long. We live in apartments for too long. We have to buy a house. Two people can combine. Mergers. These are things we don't hear about. People don't merge here. Our people do everything alone, alone, alone. That is why our suffering is long. We, 
buy houses, let the equity grow, let the equity grow, and then you can even borrow money against that equity to send your children to school. In fact, to even take money to do things. All we do is we want to build houses because we want to outdo one another. Out of jealousy, as a vicious jealousy, not for the need to succeed as a people, to advance. What is wrong? We got to do better. Financial discipline, financial investment, life insurance is the secret. The financial investment is the secret of prosperity in, 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 in diaspora. We got to do that. Yes, a lot of us belong to associations. A lot of us belong to a local association. But honestly, it's a false. It's false. Why do I say that? Because it's tribalistic. The Cameroonians have their own associations. The Ghanaians have their own. Kenyans have their own. Arabs have their own. Not, not Africans have their own. Christians have their own groups. Muslims have their own groups. That is what, and where is the unity? People of color, my people, where is the unity? That is why our children, they are, our children are not, in, are not, they care less about what we do because they see the fraudulent, Ideas we, 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 we perpetuate and think we're, we're forward-looking people. Yes, nobody did to us. Yes, this is a diaspora forum where we attack miseducation of our people. But at the same time, we have to look squarely in the mirror and tell ourselves what we do wrong. Our children have no interest in what we're doing. If there's any association, anywhere, anywhere where children pick up, where children are the face, the future represent, show me. Why? Because they hear us gossip. We engage in vain gossip against one another. We do not help one another. We do not help. We will not share information. They do not see any progressive thing adults do. Yes, children do not see any progressive thing adults do. That is why they are not interested. They turn their back on our tradition. It's not about wearing the clothes. It's not about trying to play their music. No! Teach your children your language. Let them speak your language. Let them speak your language. A lot of African languages are dying away. People, what is wrong? What is wrong? We've got to do better. We've got to do better. we got to do better. We've got to tweak this thing. Jews have Jewish schools in the United States. Indians have um, Indian schools in the United States. Arabs have, they teach Islamic, they teach Islam, they teach Arabic, they teach the Quran in the United States, in Canada, in the United Kingdom, in Germany. What happened to the rest of Africa? But gossip and talk about people. We don't want to live around one another. Look at all, each time you see your, your person, you turn around, you run away. What is the problem? What is the problem? A lot of African languages are dying away. It's so sad. We compete with one another. We compete with one another. Build houses at home, people. Children are not interested in. These children are never going to live in Africa. And you know it. You're striving so hard just to show off. I made it, I made them. Who cares who, what you made into this world? Who cares? Nobody's looking at you. You're only fighting against your own shadow. Yes, you're fighting against your shadow. Yes, we compete against one another for nothing. Jealousy, gossip, vainness, mental slavery, pettiness. We've got to get out of it. We've got to get out of it. Worst of all, look at cab drivers. Look at pastors sleeping with people's wives. Leave people's wives alone. Yes, I said it. Leave people's wives alone. These people suffer to bring people here and when they raise them, make them look good, your eyes is all over them. Leave them alone. Leave people's wife alone. Yes, to try. You got to leave people's wife alone. You think people don't know? People do know what you're doing. Don't think it's hidden. Nothing hidden. And this head that will not be revealed. And you know that. You know that. Leave it alone. What are you known by? What do people know you for around the world? You spray thing because you spray money, people don't know you because of your company, because of your hard work, because of your diligence, or because of your fraud? Because you're a front for a politician back home. Because you're a dupe, you're a scammer. You're a foreigner, you're a Yahoo girl, you're a Yahoo man. 
What are you contributing to the face, the progress, the success of your people? Is it shame? Or is it what? And you think people don't know. They see you spraying money and people clap for you. You do know what they say behind your back? Shame. You bring shame to all of us. Look at what is happening at home. Look at the bridge. Look at, look at the bridge at Lokoja Bridge. Look at the look look at the suffering in Cameroon. Look at what Paul Bia is doing. Some just, just literally waiting to die like Mobutu Sesako and the rest of them. Look at what is happening in Sudan. Look at what is happening in Ethiopia today. Look at from West Africa down and then from West Africa up. Look at North Africans. Look at how they're doing their lives. What happened to us? What happened to us as a people? Look at Haiti, look at Dominican Republic. Look at, look at Brazil, look at people of color in Brazil. Look at the problem of Pakistan and India. Look at Kashmir, look at all of us in the world. What happened to us? What happened? What happened? And we are so wasteful as a people. Yes, we are wasteful as a people. Yes, I'm not talking about the weddings and burials. No, 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 no. I should be everywhere. Everybody I should be. We sink in loans and we do not do the right thing. No children education fund, no life investment, no thing, no life insurance, nothing. No, don't buy houses or we buy houses more than we can afford. Not within our riches. It is sad. We've got to do better as a people. We've got to do better. We've got to ask questions. We don't help one another. Look at it. When your brother is, is, is doing tax or whatever, people don't go there. They run away. They prefer to go to other people. When your brother is a seamstress, your sister is a seamstress, or make, make hair, or do something to survive, you do not patronize them. You do not help one another. What is the problem, people? But you talk about them. And later on Sunday, you go and pray. Foul. I do not believe you. Well, I'll stop here. I feel deeply about this. And you know, you can feel it. I feel it strong in my bones. But like we said, to know the road ahead, ask those coming back. I wish you the best. Now, Shout out for the day. Look at that. Look at the first person there. Bessie Coleman. Oh my God. She the pioneer of Beatrix, uh, Texas, USA. A young intelligent slave girl who walked the cotton fields to help her large family of 13 survive. She left college due to lack of funds for her tuition and went to Chicago to join her brother. She was enchanted by stories of pilots returning from the airfields of World War I. She made up her mind to be a pilot. In 1918, female pilots were rare and African-American pilots were non-existent. But Coleman was, st uh, uh, in fact, Cornwall was stonewalled by sexism and racism in America. Hearing of her woes, an African-American newspaper man, Mr. Robert Abbott, the, depub the publisher of the Chicago Defender, encouraged and financed her trip to Paris in 1920 where she trained with, the, with some of the best pilots in Europe. She earned her international pilot's license in 1921. She returned to America as a celebrity. Thank you, friends. Does anyone remember uh, James Baldwin, who had to run to Paris to live and die due to racism? Recently, people like uh, Tanahesi Coates resides in Paris due to racism and repressive police brutality in the United States. Number two. Check out this guy. Another aviator guy, another aviation guy, a Navy pilot from Mississippi, USA, Jesse Leroy Brown. Look at him. Mr. Brown Sr. took his young son, Jesse Leroy Brown, to an air show at the age of six, and that did it for, for, for the young man. Learning that no African American pilot had yet been admitted to the US military. Young Mr. Brown wrote the president, wrote President Franklin D. Roosevelt to question the state of affairs. Yes, what a heart. Despite a lot of resistance, just like Coleman, Bessie Coleman, Mr. Brown applied to the U.S. Navy and was admitted to the pilot program in 1945, ladies and gentlemen, 1945. In 1947, he graduated as a naval officer as a 
skilled flying fighter aircraft pilot. In 1948, he received his Naval Aviator badge. He died in the Korean War as a team squadron leader. Look at that. The woman was the first. She had to go to France to overcome and then op and open the door for Jesse Leroy Brown. Number three, Cos Becker. Yes, look at him. He's known as the Buffett of Africa. From Johannes, South Africa. Yes, get used to it. This is Diaspora Forum, where really we attack the injustices, the miseducation of our people. We address it, but you know what? We come in different shapes, colors, and physiognomy in Africa. Yes, and Mr. Becker is making us all proud. We celebrate Africans wherever they are. South African media and entertainment giant NASPA are the largest holdings in Chinese, uh, in Chinese uh, internet giant Tencent. Buying a 31% stake in Tencent in 2001 makes Becker the Buffett of Africa. The initial $32 million investment has grown to $116 billion. Repeat, $116 billion. Becker famously waived the salary to get paid in stock options when he was CEO. Can you see that? Not everybody is a thief. Note, the bulk of South African pension funds is invested heavily in NASPAS. Wise guy, wise people, protecting its own on Chinese industry. Number four, Trevor Noah, the Mike Wrecker, comedian, Johannes South Africa, but lives in New York. Comedian extraordinary, one of US most prominent voices criticizing the presidency of Donald Trump and African leaders like uh, Jacob Zuma and Tambo Mbeki. Mr. Noah has brought millennia inspired thinking and astute outside view to the Daily Show and taught some Americans that Africa is not a country but a continent, a large one at that. And then number five, Kamel Daoud, a journalist with a cost, all just Algeria. He wrote Messault as a counterpoint to French literary icon Albert Camus's Le Tringer. Daoud struck deep at the rotten ties, yes, rotten ties that, that join France and Algeria. Mr. Daoud is an editor and journalist. He has helped bridge generation from the old guard to the imagined youth and has made many enemies by his unsparing position on Islamists and politicians. An imam who passed fatwa on him on December 2014 was surprised to see the pushback. Daoud got him jailed for months. Yes, talk about the power of the pen. He thought this was the case of uh, Salman Rushdie. Good job. Each time I think about these people, I feel proud in my heart. Remember, like, subscribe, and ring the bell below. Leave comments to us. Remember, I'm a motivational speaker. I really, really would like to speak at a forum close to you so we can talk one-on-one -on -one about what plague our people. I'm proud of you. Look at my contact information down below. You can call me, you can email me, I'd be very glad to speak one-on-one -on -one with you. I'm proud of you. You're doing good. We just need to keep adjusting as day by day. Things will get better and we'll thrive as a people. Keep your head up. I'm proud of you. And my car is my name. This is Diaspora Forum.